Right now, an update on last night's shooting on Madison's north side that has since led to a homicide investigation and an arrest. Plus, two armed people, including a 13-year-old girl, are dead after a law enforcement standoff overnight in southern Dane County. We'll have a live report with what we know. And the new superintendent of the Madison School District talks about his homecoming, how knowing Madison could be pivotal to his success. You're watching News 3 now at 5. And we thank you for staying with us. We begin with that continuing coverage on two separate homicide cases last night. First out of Albion, where two people are dead after a standoff between law enforcement and an armed suspect. And in Madison, an arrest was made today in that deadly shooting late last night on the city's north side that left a man dead. Well, we have team coverage bringing you all the latest information on these two developing stories. News Now's Catherine Merck, who has been covering this story since it first broke last night. She is live now with the very latest on an update here from police. And our Braden Ross live in Albion with the latest information there. Braden? Yeah, a murder, an abandoned child, a car chase, a home invasion, and an armed standoff. This is where all of that violence came to an end early this morning here in the town of Albion. Now it all started for Dane County Sheriff's deputies around 5.30 p.m. last night. That's when they were called to a home for a report that a five-month-old baby had been dropped off there by two people. Deputies would later learn one of those people, 38-year-old Alexander Grunke, was a person of interest in a homicide in Dubuque County, Iowa, earlier in the day. Officials say both the baby and the other person in the car, a 13 year old girl lived at that Iowa home. As uh, uh, officers attempted to make contact with the vehicle, the vehicle failed to stop and a pursuit ensued. It went through numerous jurisdictions and both occupants of the vehicle fired their uh, weapons at deputies and responding agencies. Now that chase with Grunky and that 13 year old girl ended here in the town of Albion on Highway 51. That's the scene one neighbor I spoke with found as she was trying to get home last night. The cops who were blocking 51 had some big guns. That kind of sealed the deal of like, oh, there is something more going on, obviously, than just the little isolated, you know, they're, they're, this is big. It's bigger than just down there on Washington Street. Now, when the car stopped, both Grunky and the 13-year-old ran from the vehicle. The 13-year-old girl was found dead nearby in a, the woods of unknown causes. She had no visible wounds. Grunky broke into a nearby home where he barricaded himself in the basement. A family was home at the time, but they were able to make it out safely. After an hours-long standoff, Grunky was found dead in that basement of apparent suicide. Now, there are tons of details coming out in this case. We have a few disturbing details coming into our newsroom, I understand, right now. Eric? All right, yeah, uh, Braden, thank you. And the, we have learned that this is not Grunke's first run-in with law enforcement. Online court records show back in September 2006, Grunke, along with his twin brother Nicholas Grunke and Dustin Radke, visited a cemetery in Cassville so that they could transfer a corpse to a different location so Nicholas could have sex with it. In 2010, Grunke was handed a two-year prison sentence. Now to Madison, where we learned more today about that deadly shooting last night on the city's north side. Yeah, police say a woman has been arrested in connection with that incident. Our Catherine Merck was at the scene where police arrived last night and now joins us live with an update from police. Catherine? This was the first homicide of the year for the city of Madison, and so the police department provided more details about what happened at this apartment complex last night. Here's what we know as of late this afternoon. At around 6.30 last night, Madison police got a call to this apartment complex on the 1900 block of Northport Drive. There, a 31-year-old man had life-threatening injuries and was taken to the hospital where he later died. Today, police confirmed that Tamar Brianna Beasley was booked into the Dane County Jail in connection to this shooting. Police said surveillance video showed an altercation between Beasley and the male victim who she had a domestic partnership with. That fight happened near a playground at the apartment complex before a shot was fired. I often find it, you know, disturbing when I see playgrounds uh, near the scene of, of any particular incident of violence. I think we all do, uh, which means that we have to do a better job. 
Beasley is tentatively charged with first-degree intentional homicide. The police chief told us there weren't any prior criminal calls between Beasley and the victim here in Madison, but there was a previous incident in Illinois, and they're working to get more information about that altercation from the Chicago Police Department. We don't know the amount of times that the male victim was shot as police await autopsy results. This is still an active investigation. Reporting live on Madison's north side, I'm Catherine Merck, News 3 Now. Catherine, thank you. And we want to remind you that there are local resources available for victims of domestic violence, whether that is you or someone you know. Help is out there for people that are stuck in a domestic violence situation. Domestic Violence Intervention Service, or DAYS, can be called at any time. There is a 24-hour helpline. That number is 608-251-4445. And there is also the National Domestic Violence Violence hotline. That number is 800 799 7233. As these stories were breaking, we sent out push alerts on our Channel 3000 app. To stay up to date with the latest information, make sure to download our free Channel 3000 mobile app by searching WISC TV wherever you get your apps. Well, next tonight, the statewide tornado drill that was scheduled for tonight has been canceled due to the potential for severe weather. That drill was scheduled to happen at 6.45. It was canceled as a precautionary measure. It will not be rescheduled. This would have been the second test today. The first was at 1.45 in the afternoon. That chance of severe weather here, well, pretty low. Let's check your first warm forecast with Chief Meteorologist Alex Harrington. Alex? Yeah, Eric, the threat is very, very low. And what that threat is for is for the potential for a few funnel clouds, maybe a brief spin up across the area. And it's not likely, but the National Weather Service wants to caution folks. We don't want to confuse anybody with a drill with the potential for, again, isolated chance for a severe thunderstorm with a very weak spin up. Those showers right now are most prevalent over portions of southwestern Wisconsin, stretching from Camp Douglas down to Lone Rock, down towards Platteville. Here in Dane County, high and dry right now unless you're just west and 151 out towards Mount Horeb. Some of the more persistent showers and maybe a clap or thunder or two around Hillsborough down towards Bloom. Our friends over towards Richland Center have some rain coming down at a pretty good clip right now. Not even seeing any lightning out there right now, but Highland, you're probably having some uh, pretty hefty downpours just north of Cobb on 151 by north by just a couple of miles. We'll see these showers and we'll see these thunderstorms continue through the evening hours they should start to dwindle and wane as we head towards 11 o'clock. That's when we lose the heat of the day. That heat of the day is necessary to promote these storms to get a little bit on the feisty side. And again, I want to stress very, very clearly that the likelihood of us seeing a funnel cloud of or a tornado is very, very low better chances and we've been talking about this for days on the first one weather team alert day conditions are expected on Tuesday for high winds hail and the possibility of a few tornadoes coming up in my main weather we're going to track that weather system and I'll discuss how rare it is for the storm prediction center to issue a risk of severe weather five six days in advance and we had a couple days of extra lead time on that. All right, Alex, thank you. New tonight at 5, a teenager is in custody in connection to a homicide in Beloit from last Friday. Yesterday, multiple law enforcement conducted search warrants at two homes in the 1300 block of Yates Avenue in Beloit and also in the 600 block of South Main Street in Janesville. As a result of the investigation, the Beloit Police Department took a 16-year-old into custody, an investigation is ongoing. Also new tonight, a guilty verdict has been reached on the Minnesota man charged in connection with the fatal stabbing of a teenager on the Apple River in 2022. Nikolai Mu was found guilty on multiple charges, including first-degree reckless homicide. The trial lasted eight days, with more than three dozen witnesses taking the stand. On July 30th, 2022, Mu stabbed five people on the river, killing 17-year-old Isaac Schumann. During the trial, the prosecution sought to prove that Mu was the aggressor, continuing to show cell phone video of the confrontation. I think it showed his consciousness of guilt, that he knew he wasn't in fear for his life, so he had to embellish the story and say that other people pulled knives on him and he took away their knife in order to justify it. Mew's sentencing date has not yet been scheduled. He could face up to 97 years in prison. Next tonight at 5, Dr. Joe Gothard has been chosen as the new school district superintendent in the Madison School District. And today he introduced himself to staff and students. Our Maddie Himes has more about his plans for the district. 
Born and raised in Madison, Gothard has already worked as a teacher, coach, principal, and administrator at MMSD. He says that knowledge of the community will assist him in serving the district. You will not address achievement gaps, opportunity gaps, unless you know your community and know what assets lie within your community. That's where it has to start. Gothard spoke of these gaps in relation to students of color, English language learners, students with disabilities, and students experiencing housing instability. It's a big commitment on my part to truly be um, present in the community, but it's, I believe, how we're going to change some of the outcomes that have been historically here for too long, especially for our students of color. He said community partnership was a pillar when leading the 68 buildings at St. Paul Public Schools. He use, uses his experience in Minnesota and takes it to Madison Metropolitan School District, which I feel like he's gonna be a great superintendent. And while rebuilding his connections with both the community and the students. It's just better when they know you and they understand and maybe if you have issues what you're going through. The new superintendent will quickly have to address budget deficits. It's clear today that public schools are not funded to adequately meet the needs of students. Members of the school board tell me it will be a challenge to preserve staffing and initiatives effectively while facing operational deficits. On News 3 Now at 6, I speak with the school board president about what exactly made Gothard stand out. Our Maddie, thank you. The longest tenured justice on the state Supreme Court announced today she will retire. That puts an even more intense focus on next year's state Supreme Court race. Political reporter Will Keneally is here with more. Will? So that retiring Supreme Court justice is a key member of the liberal majority on the bench in Walsh Bradley. Now her retirement will leave an open seat on the high court and because the liberals only have a one seat majority, whoever wins next April's election will control the balance of the court and they could keep control for years to come. Now this could be significant on an impact on policy here in Wisconsin. After liberals took control of the court last year, they've done things like throwing out the state's legislative districts and they could have the final say on abortion policy here in Wisconsin. So for that April 2025 election, we've seen at least one conservative already jump in the ring, former Republican AG Brad Schimmel. On the liberal side, we've heard from multiple sources that Dane County Judge Susan Crawford and appellate judge Chris Taylor could be considering runs, though both judges have not confirmed their decision yet to us. We will continue to follow it. Will, thank you. A new report released by the State Department of Public Instruction today paints a bleak picture of the state's teacher workforce. The report calls teacher staffing a crisis, saying that teachers are leaving Wisconsin at an alarming rate. The data shows teacher pay has also dropped off in the last 10 years. We must demand that our elected leaders make the necessary investments in our public schools, in our students, in our educators. It is our collective responsibility, and yet we've fallen short. Underly pushed for using unspent parts of the state budget to help support teachers and schools. Well, just had Alex rejoins us his complete forecast as we continue to keep an eye out for some shower chances. And how some former Badger athletes are teaming up for a celebrity basketball game to benefit children and adults with disabilities. That story coming up. Let's check out the markets in Thursday trading. The Dow falls again, but just a bit down two. But it is a strong day for the NASDAQ, up 272 points. S&P 500 adds. 38 and a half. We'll be right back. It's our lowest prices of the season at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Right now, shop unbeatable deals on the things you need for spring, like a great range of Scott's and miracle Grow premium lawn and garden products, including Scott's Turf Builder Weed and Feed, $59.99 after sale and $10 mail-in rebate. Scott's Grub X Season Long Grub Killer, $22.99 after sale and rebate. And two cubic foot bags of miracle Grow garden soil, just $9.99. Don't miss our lowest prices of the season in-store or online at farmandfleet.com. Two iconic rock bands. One night of history. The Marshall Tucker Band. Jefferson Starship. Live on Cloud9 Tour. Saturday, May 25th. Ho-Chunk Gaming, Wisconsin Dells. All the hits. All the history. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster. For the first time ever. The Marshall Tucker Band. Jefferson Starship. Together. It's easier to manage my chemo side effects since a great supportive care came to see me. They're taking the time to listen and talk about options for feeling better. 
a grace caring every step of the way you and running have been together for a while now. Fact is, so has Morgan's Good Form Running. Every run is more than just a run. It's about finding oneself. Movement in a new pair of Hoka's is good magic. Gear up today at Morgan's Good Form Running. Buy a pair of Hoka's and experience the difference. Why run when you can fly? Experience the comfort and style of Hoka. Visit us here today at Morgan's Good Form Running. Morgan's Good Form Running, Hilldale. We wanted to be able to enjoy all four seasons, and Patio Enclosures helped us make that dream come true. The one and only Patio Enclosures. My husband and I finally agreed that we need a new bathtub and shower, so he went right to work on it. He's procrastinating. For a new bathtub or shower, just call 1-800-HANSONS. Installed in as little as one day with optional safety features and a no-leak guarantee. Get 50% off installation or no interest, no payments for two full years. Offer ends soon. Call 1-800-HANSONS. Get it done. Coming up on News 3 Now, the latest on the unfolding homicide investigation in Madison. Catherine Merck walks us through what police believe led to the murder. Brayden Ross is following up on a deadly pursuit that led to a standoff. That's tonight at 6. Campaign 2024 is heating up in Battleground, Wisconsin, and News 3 Now is bringing you complete team coverage throughout this crucial election year. From the candidates to the issues that matter to you, the voters. Campaign 2024 on News 3 Now, moving forward. Watching News 3 Now at 5, moving forward. Welcome back for anyone who was hoping to watch some afternoon baseball today. You'll have to wait another day. The series finale between the Brewers and Reds was postponed because of heavy rain down in Cincinnati. It comes after last night's game was actually delayed by almost two hours. Today's game will be rescheduled as part of a doubleheader in August. On August 30th, Milwaukee will now head to Baltimore this weekend for a series against the Orioles. On Sunday, it'll actually be the first meeting for the Brewers against their former Cy Young Award winner, Corbin Burns, who is now an Oriole. Meanwhile, the Bucks will be back on our airwaves tomorrow night for the final time this season. Travel to Oklahoma City to take on the Thunder on Television Wisconsin, 3.2 over the air. This will be the final matchup against the Thunder this year. The Bucks currently lead the season series one game to none after a 25-point statement win last month. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m. Looking ahead now at 5, Wisconsin celebrities are hitting the hardwood this weekend for a very good cause at the 5th annual Easter Seal Celebrity Basketball Experience. Former Badger football and basketball players will be lacing up to support children and adults with disabilities. It's a free, family-friendly event. You know, the, the idea behind the events to really just have fun, um, bring awareness to Easter Seals, but to have, you know, make it fun for the whole family. Tip-off is 3 p.m. and a pregame workshop is free for anyone who would like to attend. From 1 to 2.30 p.m., a waiver is required to participate in the workshop. Well, let's get a look at your first warrant forecast. Chief Meteorologist Alex Harrington joins us, Alex. Eric, yes, we're tracking some showers and isolated thunderstorms this evening, then a breezy Friday, and guess what? That warm weekend ahead is still in the cards. Get ready to get outside and do all those outdoor activities that I know many of you have been planning. Want to also call out again, the 645 second test tornado warning drill that has been canceled and the reason why our friends at the National Weather Service this afternoon let us all know in the press that the potential for a rare occurrence of a funnel cloud this evening is prompting the cancellation of the drill. We don't want to confuse anybody with the real deal. Nothing severe out there right now, just some showers, clap or two of thunder, maybe a little bit of lightning over Richland County. Here in Dane County, a few showers just west of Cross Plains and Mount Hora, but some of the more persistent showers and maybe heavy shower activities out towards Cobb and Highland just north of 18151. Our future track model is doing a brilliant job, I think, of eye, uh, eyeing up those showers and those isolated thunderstorms from 6, 7, 8 o'clock. When you join us for the 10 o'clock show, those showers and isolated thunderstorms should be in the dwindling mode, and then they'll be out of here as we go on into your Friday. Amounts pretty sparse, not widespread amounts of rain. If you do get one or two of those showers or storms to travel over the same area, you might pick up a 
half inch to three quarters of an inch. But and there will also be places in southern Wisconsin that stay entirely dry. Really want to emphasize here for a couple days we've been tracking stormy weather for next week with the conversation of potential alert day conditions. That is looking like it very likely will verify on Tuesday for the potential of damaging winds, hail, and some isolated tornadoes. This would be all day Tuesday morning, afternoon, and evening with the best chances Tuesday afternoon and evening. Let me explain a little bit more here. This is the Storm Prediction Center outlook for really all of southern Wisconsin for this potential risk for severe weather on Tuesday. Again, we were mentioning this a few days ago for the Storm Prediction Center to have enough confidence to issue an outlook outlook five, six days in advance means there's very high confidence that all the ingredients are coming together for the potential for severe weather. So the first one weather team definitely first to warn and we will be first to keep you uh, in tune with everything with this upcoming weather system. I want to call out one other thing here. Look at the showers widespread thunderstorms as well. A little bit of yellow in there as we go towards Tuesday at noon. Watch what happens in the afternoon. A lot more green, a lot more shower and thunderstorm activity. It's widespread across the entire area. And what that means for our alert day conditions on Tuesday is if we have too much shower and thunderstorm activity throughout the day, we don't warm up quite enough. And if we don't warm up quite enough, that may limit the severe weather activity. So that's something I wanted to toss out there days in advance that even though we have alert day conditions expected on Tuesday, if it's too much water, too much, too much clouds, we don't warm up enough to have that widespread severe weather chance. That's a distinct possibility. Prior to alert day conditions, look at Saturday and Sunday. Sunday, 76 degrees for a high temperature. Just get outside. Enjoy it. I, my social media folks are saying I cannot wait to get out into the garden, rake, plants, you'd name it. Go enjoy it. Have a good time. All right, let's look at our traffic here on 50 miles per hour eastbound, 59 eastbound at that exchange heading towards 39, 39 north and southbound doing a good clip at about 70 miles per hour and that's the speed limit. So that's good that folks are heating the 70 mile per hour speed limit and then up towards the Dells folks are going at 70 miles per hour, but it's, it's raining up towards the Dells. So I suspect the windshield wipers will be going and at times tonight just be prepared. You may need those windshield wipers on your Wednesday high profile vehicles. Be aware it's going to be a windy one. All right, Alex, thank you. A new law in Florida has many parents wondering about social media and when it's the right time for their children. That story next at five. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Get solar and get saving with Olsen Solar Energy in the Madison area. When you're talking to someone and you call someone at Olsen Solar, it's not someone in Utah, it's not someone in California, it is someone local right here. By doing that, you know, we control the entire process. So we control the project management, we control the design, we control the installation, the electric, the hookup, permitting, and, and that really sets us apart. Stop into our location near you or give us a call and ask us about our Earth Day promo. Want to instantly look more attractive years younger? The solution is whiter teeth, but you love coffee, tea, wine, or smoking, and all of them stain your teeth and make them yellow. It's time you discovered power swabs. One friend was like, your teeth look like really white. Did you do anything to it? And I was like, I did. <laughs> I did power swabs. Power swabs are guaranteed to whiten your teeth up to two shades after the first five minute application. Better yet, after a week, your teeth will be an average of six shades whiter. Power swabs are easier on your gums and cause less sensitivity. I've used strips and trays and they both gave me really sensitive teeth. With the power swabs, I've been using them for a week and I had hot coffee this morning and ice cream last night and no problems. <laughs> Over 500,000 people have already seen incredible results. Now it's your turn to get started with power swabs. I like my smile. This is a power swab smile. Call or go online to receive 50% off. You'll also receive the Stain Out Quick Stick absolutely free. Plus get free shipping. I'm Megan Tim, Director of Community Health at SSM Health. You may know us as healthcare providers, but we live here too. And as good neighbors, we know our community thrives when we take care of each other. That's why SSM Health and News 3 Now are sharing the keys to health. Watch for our expert information and advice on air, online, and at fun local events. Join SSM Health and News 3 Now, and together, we'll unlock a healthier community by taking time for kids. Why won't you? 
<sighs> want fresh air. <laughs> You need the experts. The home renewal experts at Belco will make your project a breeze with free installation on windows, siding, doors, and roofing. Plus, no interest for six years. Free installation won't last long. Hurry. Call now. Call 866 for Belco. Madison's older generations open up. Settle in with Madison Magazine for Bon Frank and funny reflections from local seniors. Then meet a new generation taking action against climate change. Madison Magazine, online and on newsstands now. Madison Magazine presents The City Guide, your ultimate resource for Madison area adventures. With inside tips on where to eat, what to do, and places to see. Available now on area newsstands or online at madisonmagazine.com. Watching News 3 Now at 5, moving forward. A new Florida law bans younger children from having social media accounts. The issue has many parents questioning at what age should kids start using social media and should the government have a say in that? Jeff Wagner has more. Having a drink, driving a car, all are well known for their legal age restrictions. Social media is a bit more of the Wild West. It's done. There you go. And Florida's governor is trying to rein it in. The state's new law bans children under 14 years old from social media. Kids 14 to 15 need parental consent. Platforms like Instagram and TikTok would also be required to close accounts that don't meet the age restrictions. 14 is what was recommended as a place, a healthy place to start. Sarah Jerstad is the clinical director of psychological services at Children's Minnesota and got the 14-year-old recommendation from a study done by the Surgeon General. It has to do with brain development. So um, what we know is at age 14, we're able to start um, that process of reasoning. She says 14-year-olds also better prioritize how they spend their time and hopefully have established hobbies or relationships. Because one of the concerns is that if social media becomes prominent so early, it might displace some of those other healthy activities. In that Surgeon General study, teenagers reported spending an average of three and a half hours on social media a day. Do you think we should leave it up to the government or it should be up to parents? I'm not sure I don't mind too much government inter guidance. Guidance. Guidance, yeah. not necessarily mandate. Mandate. However age restrictions are determined, Dr. Jerstad says parents should set a good example for their children and put the phone down and do activities together without devices. Jeff Wagner, CBS News, Minneapolis. The Surgeon General study also found nearly half of teenagers said social media made them feel worse about their body image. We'll get a final check of your first warrant forecast when we come back. Win a hand paid jackpot at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells and you'll have a chance to win a new Corvette and a shot at $100,000 in cash. It's the Mega Jackpot Winners Quarterly Drawings going on now at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells. You've probably heard by now, but Wanaki Remodeling has been transforming homes for the better part of half a century by installing materials that stand the test of time from a team of trusted home pros. Our design team delivers a turnkey experience for your interior or exterior remodeling project, leaving you with a home you love. At Wanaki Remodeling, we'll never stop improving. Right now, get a special window offer. Buy one window, get one 40% off plus special financing. Visit WanakiRemodeling.com for more. Watch this. It's all 100% real. Witness what happens to this woman's bags under her eyes in an actual time lapse in just minutes. Nothing has been doctored or tampered with. The very real problem will disappear before your eyes and hers with a revolutionary topical formulation that works in just minutes. And the effects will last for hours and hours. Over 1 million people are using this topical technique to visually reduce puffiness and bags. It works on sagging jowls, even fine lines and wrinkles on the face and forehead. Introducing Plexiderm. In just minutes, you can restore and beautify your face, even look years younger. And the look will last all day or all evening. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. I'm just in love with the mirror right now. Jump on board and say yes to this amazing $14.95 Prove It Plexiderm trial. You'll see why our customers describe Plexiderm with three words. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Order right now. We'll pay your shipping. Operators are standing by. 
This famous wood fence from the show Home Improvement had to have boards replaced 13 times in only nine years. Our fences outlast wood three to one and are all backed by our extensive lifetime warranty. This month, save $1,000 on your project. Visit the website or call the number for your new fence today. Upgrade your garage, patio, or basement this spring with our beautiful cutting edge concrete coatings. Our coatings are four times stronger than epoxy and guaranteed to increase your home's value. For a limited time, save up to $500 off your project. Plus, call during this program to see if you qualify for payments starting at just $30 a month. At Menards, we offer a wide selection of outdoor furniture in different sizes and styles to bring the outdoor space of your dreams to life. From creating the perfect place to entertain family and friends. To designing the perfect getaway for you in your own backyard. Right now, get this Berkeley Bay set for $9.99.99 after 11% rebate. Save big money at the Nards. Win a hand paid jackpot at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells, and you'll have a chance to win a new Corvette and a shot at $100,000 in cash. It's the Mega Jackpot Winners Quarterly Drawings going on now at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells. Coming up tonight on the CBS Evening News, the breaking news that O.J. Simpson has died after a battle with cancer. A look back at the murder trial of the century that divided the nation and the NFL players' infamous legacy. Those headlines and more tonight on the CBS Evening News. Alex is back. Final check of the forecast. That radar is kind of a, I don't know, I don't I've seen it like that very often. It's just kind of like strings of storms all across the state. Yeah, it's showers and thunderstorms that are actually circulating in behind an area of low pressure. He's got a smile on his face at my, <laughs> at my description. I say, I don't that's have a future I'm, in weather. That's because I'm explaining. <laughs> I'm teaching. It's the teacher in me. These isolated showers and thunderstorms, the thunderstorms, there's a very, very brief chance that there could be a little bit of rotation with some of these showers and the thunderstorms, so that's what's prompted the national weather service to cancel the 645 statewide tornado drill just for that very very rare off chance that one or two of those storms could produce a brief funnel cloud we'll keep an eye on it. it's not a very likely event that we would see this but if it is we will be here to let you know all right alex thanks we're back in 30 minutes for news three now at six cbs evening news is next